Things are taking a turn for the worse, that is for sure. The storm is inbound. Got in the net. Oh God, am I soft. Come over, dude. It's a hard knock like, and these hooks suck. Get in here. <laughs> Perfect. Trip ain't over yet. We decided to stop at the lake on the way back to the house. Uh, now that we've got the trailer strapped down, seems to be A-OK. -okay. And we're gonna get a little bit of last minute fishing in on this trip. I'm stoked. The weather is the fishiest it has been the entire trip. At the moment, it's low winds. It's gonna storm later. Look at the cloud cover. It's looking fantastic. Oh, it's, I think I'm bringing it in slowly. Uh, oh, you have a fish. I have a fish. Oh, I have a fish. Oh, <laughs> little jerk bait action. I just grabbed that for two seconds. Devin was about to start on our little brunch subway we got. <laughs> Yeah, man. Second fish you've ever seen, baby. All right. Back in the water for you. I like this spot. Fish you've ever seen. Oh, never mind. Second bass you've ever seen. <laughs> He's experienced now. He's seen a lot of species over this trip. <laughs> He's, yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right, let's go. If I get a big fish, there's, there's no catching it. That little fish took me in there. I need like 20 pound fluorocarbon to fish a jerk bait right now. This jerk bait looks so good. Yep. Yep. Nice. Devin's on. <laughs> oh my gosh! What you got there? This is a nice fish, you know. I got it's a baby. What is happening? I, got a little lamb. I guess he just realized he was like out of the water. I don't know what he thought he was gonna have for lunch. There we go. First bass. I was like, oh, I got a hit, and then I was like, there's no fish, and there definitely was a little fish. Look, he's fin size. All right. Say bye bye. We need to upgrade to some bigger fish. Got him. Ew. Come on. This drag is loose. Yeah. I don't think I'm going to catch this fish. I'm going to the right. He's digging. Oh boy. Light line. Come on. Yep. Nice one. There we go. Come on. Come on in here. Nice, babe. Oh my gosh. What the, what the trolling motor just happened? We got the fish. Wow. Spot lock. Both of us almost went in. Whole boat almost went in. There we go. Spot lock. Come on, Garmin. We might have hit a stump. I think so. There's some stumps around here. Definitely some stumps. Okay. I'm just watching the trolling motor. Devin and I both almost fell off of here trying to land that fish. Thank you, baby. <laughs> Look at how green that fish is. These fish are dark. They're hanging out in that hydrilla. They're uh, taking on that color. All the winds have picked up and we're in a minefield of stumps out here. It is an awesome way to wrap up a long journey with a broken trailer. Let's get this thing back in the water and try and catch some more. See ya. These fish are on the move today, y'all. The water temps are approaching 70 degrees. That's why we ventured back here shallow. We've seen the few other bass boats that are out on the lake today, and they're spending a lot of time in these shallow stumps, and we're thinking some of these fish might be on beds. A lot of times these power plant lakes are a month, a couple months, three months ahead of the usual spawn schedule. And so with that being said, we were on the hunt, but I figured I'd just be casting around the jerk bait as I was looking around in the shallows with the old polarized shades. And I'm not seeing too many light spots in the grass, which should easily identify those beds, but uh, we caught one on the move in the shallows and so I think we might spend a little bit more time in the minefield here before we head back out to those points in deeper water. I'm trying to find like a little a nice little opening where I can hit spot lock comfortably. I think we're about to be resting on a couple stumps which might not be ideal. Fish. I got it. Nice they're all over. Jerk bait is the key player. Oh, no, in the net. Got him. <laughs> nice. Hey, hey, away from those treble hooks. Hey. Go on. Back. Yeah, I'm just looking at the motor. Yeah, we're just, I put it on spot lock, and since it's facing towards us, it, it would be bad if we hit a stump going forwards and the blade hits it first. That was cast afterwards. I'm trying my hardest just to uh, navigate through all these logs. Jerkbait is just killing it. Devin's on the back of the boat throwing the same thing. I just got lucky with the location, and it's obvious that while these aren't the giants, I think we have found a little bit of an upsize from where we were. So we're going to spend some time back here once again, cast these jerk baits around, fan cast a little bit. We're spot locked at the moment. Anything could happen with this motor, so we're just keeping our sea legs about us, and we're going to get these jerk baits going 360 degrees around this boat, see if we can land a few more of these. 
Ooh, watch the motor. Watch the motor. Going crazy. Finn, in the back now. All right, let's get him back in the water and try for some more right here. Watch your legs. Just enjoying the nice weather. All right, well. Golly, it's insane. Basically, our jerk baits are getting caught like every fifth cast on a stump, but the fishing back here seems to be worth it. That's why we're spending so much time in the breeze stump field. Always windy for the fly rod, but it. Oh my gosh. What kind of a stump was that? We just went airborne. You'd be smart to always have an extra prop on you if you fish this lake regularly. Well, y'all, we caught a handful. We need one more for uh, five fish in the boat. I'm gonna throw out the big game changer now. Yes, it is a little windy for the fly, but we're gonna try and make it happen. I need to look up the lake record out here. I'm sure it's not too crazy on the fly rod. Five something? That's pretty big, but if they'll hit big baits out here, we might be able to top that. The other bass fishermen are gonna say, what the f are you doing? You think this is a mother game? Yeah, kind of. made a move across the lake to the side that's a little less windy to make it easier to cast but then also just a whole nother area a little inlet with some trees to work we are making our way in there slow and steady dedicate some time to this big bait here and see if we can catch us a giant Midday update, y'all. It is 2 o'clock. The storms are not here yet, and uh, it's still overcast and windy. You would think the bite would be fire all day long, but it has died on us. Devin and I took some time to really just explore this lake and see a little bit more of it since we've never visited, uh, aside from the other day in this trip, and we really didn't fish a lot of it then. It was just a short uh, stop on the way to our destination. So with that being said, we're switching things up. We've gone to uh, darts. I switched up the color on the jerk bait. We've thrown a lot. We've been tossing jigs. Still the flipping setups when there's some good grass around, trying to punch through that. Uh, We've also gone weightless Sanko, and we're not getting too many bites. I'm telling you, we were gonna only work out deep, but then we got sidetracked because they were hitting so good in the shallows in the timber. And so, okay, that bite died down and we haven't had a good hit since. And so I'm gonna slow it down a little bit. I'm gonna creep right above the grass in some probably deeper water. We'll, I'm sure we're still gonna hit some shallows, but I'm gonna be creeping the Ganterelle Junior bluegill swim bait after we've seen a lot of bluegill roaming in the shallows. And what happens when these things venture out, when those bluegill get caught out there in the depths, that's when the bass are gonna key in and they're gonna go for it. So wish me luck on this thing because I think I'm throwing it on 10 to 12 pound fluoro and I do believe any bass that hits this is gonna be in the two to three plus range. So it's gonna be a fight, that is for sure. I'm throwing it on the reaction rod, perfect for treble hooks. And uh, yeah, it should be a good old time throwing this bait. I haven't tossed this thing around in a long time. Look at. He's got some character. He's chipped up. He's missing both side fins. He's hit the side of the boat a few times. Trebles are still tack sharp. So if it looks like it's coming this way. We, I mean, there could be other boats that are going to try and load up too. So whenever you feel the need, we can do whatever we got to do to stay safe. Well, just switched up the color on the Junior Scout. So I got this uh, deep blue type of deal, a little more subtle. And we have some darts in the box. Grass is thick here. Probably put a dart on some 15 pound foil carbon with a go-to rod and a hammer hook really be able to catch a big one if we link up with it even if it tries to take us into the grass and much better odds we've been getting lucky on the catches with this light line in the timber that's for sure now it's more just open water and grass in this little area but i think we're gonna have to go back to where we started based on all the signs right now damn so we caught that first one just out here in the middle of nowhere huh yeah oh there looks to be some fish that way Got him. There's fish here. There's fish here. I saw some on top of the grass. Okay, we just need to go out deeper with it. It's been a while. Jerk bait's still on, boys. That was so cool, though. 
I was just watching it cruise above the grass on live scope and then I saw this little extra dot just pop right on up and then boom, about 10, 15 feet in front of the boat, mega size out here today, ladies and gents. The sun has peaked out and it is getting hot. Hopefully the bite warms up with it. I just grabbed the nuke punch because I was thinking, all right, maybe some light shining down. They'll spot that nuke and I'll catch me a five plus. It hasn't happened yet, but the jerk bait continues to be the only thing catching fish out here. So I'm just cruising around the lake, throwing it. I think we're up to seven fish on the day. Everything has been on the jerk bait, despite how many times we go back and forth with other lures. And um, there's not much else to say besides that. <laughs> I might go back to the fly rod. I don't care. What? Yeah, because I want to catch a big fly fish. Oh my gosh. I know. It's a hard knock life for me. It, and these hooks suck. I don't know what it is about these flipping hooks, but they the plastic piece continuously breaks, and it looks like an EWG all of a sudden. It's got like extra curvature. I don't know if I set this thing into a tree or what. I don't think I did, but these hooks continue to break and misshape themselves very easily. Anyways. Somebody's got to want a little jerk bait. Wait, should I let this go to where I feel the ground? Sure, yeah. Got him. Darren's pissed. She's, oh no. Oh, he's still on. <laughs> I just did something funky with this reel. There he goes. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, that was that was a little guy. But I that was. Fish anyways. Yeah. I, that... fish <laughs> I guess you need to throw the jerk bait. I gave it longer pauses that time. I was like, okay, let me just let it sit for a second, and then boom, had the weight. I thought it was a bigger fish until I saw it. That's why I wasn't too worried when I was trying to fiddle with this mess that happened mid retrieve. I don't know what happened. He like gave me a little slack, and I lifted up the rod weird, and then all of a sudden I had a bird's nest on the spool mid-fight. I can't say that's ever happened to me before. Literally in the middle of the lake. We were just trying to work out deep and then I saw some fish on top of the grass here. Yeah, they're still there. Where the... Oh, oh, oh. You're gonna eat it. Someone's gonna... Oh, you're running from it. Oh, that's good. <laughs> I think... I think those were crappie. <laughs> Gotta be some fish in here somewhere. Oh God, am I saw him come over to, that's right, get in here. <laughs> that was cool. Live scope, boom. Get out of here, Finn. What is that, seven fish in the boat? New lake, let's go. Sun's out and we're about a hundred yards off a new point. We found ourselves in a predicament. We turned off all the power in hopes that We'll get enough juice to make it happen. Let's see. Got close, but no cigar. Yeah, she's asleep. Okay, so the cranking battery is done for. The trolling motor was acting up. It shows that the battery is red. We're gonna try and have enough juice to get this thing up onto the trailer, the broken trailer, crank it on before it hits because now the storm is inbound. <laughs> Things are taking a turn for the worse, that is for sure. Uh, we, we turned all the power off to the entire boat for like more than 15 minutes just to see if it would have enough juice to start. It wanted to turn over, it did not quite make it, and so main objective now is just beating the storm because it does look like it's closing in at this moment. We're at least a solid 10 minutes from the ramp, even though it's right in front of our faces. And uh, yeah, so we'll see you guys there in a second. Right about here is where things got pretty sketchy and I wasn't recording on the GoPro because both of my battery packs had died. And so we're cruising back in on the trolling motor. The storm is obviously right behind us. As we're getting close Close to the ramp, here comes one of the other four boats out on the lake that actually offered to tow us back in. Major thanks to them. We just said, hey, y'all go ahead, uh, load up your boat first, because obviously it's gonna take us a few minutes to get to the ramp, and then we'll, we'll bank our deal while you guys are loading up. No big deal, right? So we finally make it to the bank, minutes ahead of the storm. I get the pups, take them to the truck, not filming this whole time. I was about to fly the drone up just to get some footage, and thankfully I did not, because about the time we back the trailer in and get ready to load the boat with the trolling motor because our cranking battery died, it would have made things so much easier using the big motor obviously here comes the like 35 mile an hour gusts at the front of this storm the other boats start rolling up right behind us so we've got other folks waiting on us to load this boat up with the trolling motor which is normally not that big of a deal uh, if you've done this before you know you can kind of mosey on in straight up to the trailer pull your motor out in time here's what happened 
the winds were pushing 45 degrees to the ramp and so I'm having to like come in at an angle and turn the boat at the last minute just trying to get enough juice to get up onto the trailer. And then I had to throw a rope to one of the other guys that had pulled out their bass boat already. He helped me pull it up enough to get the strap on the nose of the boat and crank it up onto the trailer, but not before the first attempt where I completely bashed the trolling motor into the trailer. I thought we might have destroyed the trolling motor, but thank goodness she was still operational and I was able to get a second crack at it and that's when we got the, uh, the boat loaded. And if we were looking back on the whole scenario, we would have probably waited 15 to 20 minutes and then tried to load up because the initial gusts with that storm were so much more more powerful than 15 minutes later, but we had no clue. We just assumed a torrential downpour was on the way, the winds were gonna stay heavy, and we need to load this thing up ASAP. So one of our more scary lake experiences for sure when it came down to those last couple minutes. And with that, we'll make sure we have a camera rolling for instances like this in the future. Devin was in the truck, the only one guy was helping me load up it was just all fast paced, I hope you understand. But thank y'all so much for watching this episode. We had a blast cranking them on a newer lake to us and hope to get back out there in the future. And tell those videos, we'll see you on the next one. Well, that was hectic. Every boat on the water is getting off of this place, and we made it just in time. The winds are a blowing. We hope you enjoyed this one. Holy smokes, y'all. We'll catch you on the next one. Uh, hopefully, in better conditions.